Yeah, Anna. That song was on my mind. Breathe in, yeah. breathe out. You need to breathe. You, you're not breathing well. <laughs> breathe in, doing breathe breath out. Work, we Vinny? Talk, let me tell you why that song's on my mind. Because we're going to talk about aerobics today. Oh, good. We're going to talk about aerobics because, okay. and, and look, as you know, I'm shot out of a cannon right now because we had problems before the show started. We did. We got a late start. Yeah. But I was already, I was already shot out of a cannon before that. Right. Okay. So ask okay. me why. Ask me why. Why? It's, it's part and parcel of you were asking me about another doctor who was saying some other bullshit on the internet. Mm -hmm. Because yeah. I, I'm under the impression that these doctors now are just making up shit because someone's telling them, hey, man, you got to be controversial if you want clicks. Vinny and all those guys started talking about low carb 12 years ago. And look at all the clicks they got or whatever they call them online. I don't know what they call them. So all these doctors are just saying shit. Right, you got well, MDs just out there. It's Bleh. disturbing because it used to be like, okay, well, I get it. They, somebody has an agenda. But this, right. these are people from inside the asylum. These are low right. carbers saying some crazy stuff. So look, I'm like, whoa. And I know they're doing this because they talk to me about this when I go to the, you know these conventions and these talks and everything. Everybody wants to take me to dinner. Hey, let's go to dinner. Let's go hang out a little bit. Let's go grab a drink. And you know, 20 minutes into dinner, five minutes into a drink, it's like, um, so uh, what do you think about if if I did this, I get more clicks? What if I did that? Do you think I'll get more click? You know. It's like, really? You're a doctor. You're an MD. You're worried about clicks? Yeah, yeah. I mean, we can't make of money course. as doctors Look at Dr. Anymore. Oz, king of, king of needing yeah. clicks. Right. And, and they're all Just because they're a doctor doesn't mean somehow they're more moral than everybody else. No, they're all trying to break. figure out how to, make a, how to make a buck. Yeah. And so today, and I don't know when this came out, this guy could have put this out. And I'm not going to give you his name, but he's someone who... Someone who I've had on my show, someone who I and he and I align on a lot of things. But something just popped up on some of my social media and I was like, oh, let me see what he's up to right now. And he's going, hey, aerobics, don't do aerobics. Aerobics doesn't do anything. You do it, it doesn't do anything. As a matter of fact, it'd be detrimental for you. Aerobics. You know, if you wanna if you wanna promote lean muscle mass and you want the muscle signaling and all this other bullshit. Wow. Just do anaerobics. You, you got to do weightlifting. All right? I'm like sitting there going, wait a minute. I'm the guy that says, look, I'm an exercise physiologist. I always go, all exercise is good. People go, what's better? Aerobics, weights, what's better? And I say, yes, it's all better. There is, you're going to sit there and tell me to tell people not to do aerobics? We got people sitting around, getting fat, getting lazy, having problems, and you're gonna tell them, hey, if you're not gonna do weights, don't even get off the couch. I'm not buying into it. Do you see why I'm shot wow. out of a cannon here? Yeah. I say you have to work your aerobic engine as hard as you have to work your anaerobic engine, right? It's two different things. Right. And part of what he was saying is absolutely correct. Yeah, you have to stimulate your muscles, you got to cause that muscle growth. Muscle, muscle growth also helps soft tissue growth, helps bone growth. It's the fountain of youth. I am not denying that. Did I say that, Anna? I said that lifting weights is the fountain of youth. Yes, you did right? say that. I lift weights. All the, I never go away from weightlifting. Even when I was doing ultra cycling, I would still spend time in the gym lifting weights. Never went away from it, right? because okay. it's that good for you, but not at the expense of not doing aerobics. You will never get me to believe that, right? There is nothing you can't. So we know that the lower resting heart rate you have, the better. You think you're gonna get all of that from anaerobics, from doing weights? No, it's never gonna happen. Can you lower it a bit? Absolutely. But there are people walking out there. I, I talk to people resting heart rates in the 90s, right? That's not healthy. I don't think you're healthy until you're in the 60s. And I'd like to see your resting heart rate in the lower 50s. Just saying. And you can do that by walking, by jogging, by cycling, by rowing a boat, by paddling, by you name it. Jumping rope. Do whatever you want. 
do whatever you, I don't care what you do for aerobics, but get that heart rate down. You want to talk longevity? Lean muscle mass. Where are you going to get that from? You're going to get that from lifting weights. Longevity has everything to do with lean muscle mass, everything to do with longevity. It just does. Okay. But then you have to look at the aerobic engine. How do you stay heart healthy? That's something me and the Heart Association, American Heart Association agrees on. You exercise, get right. some aerobic activity. Hell, when the whole CrossFit thing started and all that, you know, all that crap, it was like, hey, you want, it started because all triathletes were trying to figure out how to cheat the system, how to hack. You ever hear that word hack, Anna? We're going to yeah. hack. Oh, they love saying life hack. And you can't hack. Yeah. Your, you want to hack your life. You're hacking yourself. What are you doing? What's all this hacking? Nothing works like hard work. Sorry. Right. I, I hate to be the bearer of bad news. Old man Vinny, you know, you know you know, spitting the truth here. Nothing works like good, clean, old fashioned hard work. It takes time. You can't say, Oh, I'm, I'm not going to go run far enough to run a hundred, a hundred mile um, uh, race. I'm going to cut that in half because I'm going to hack it and go to the gym and take a sledgehammer and beat on a tractor tire. That'll get me there. No, right. it's not. It's not effective. Right. And I'm not saying everyone has to go out and run a marathon or 100 miles or a 50K. And that's not what I'm talking about here. I'm talking about getting aerobic exercise week in and week out. One of my things, Anna, my New Year's, one of my New Year's resolutions every year is what? To do what? 365. At least 365 hours of aerobics per year. Now, do I believe that everyone needs to do that? Absolutely not. That's my bullshit. That's what I do. Right? right? If you got half of that, you would be doing great. If you're not right. an athlete, and you're not looking to go into some kayak races or climb mountains or do it, what have you live long day. I don't care what you're doing. Right? I like to stay in shape so I can go do stuff like that. So I can go paddle a boat or row a boat or climb a mountain or what have you. Right. And the way I do that is by keeping my aerobic engine very strong all year long. All year long. And doing that year in and year out. Let's see. Today we're at uh, probably day 62, 64 of the year. And I'm already mm -hmm. at 70 hours. I'm right. ahead of the game. 70 hours of aerobic since uh, January 1st. And I had COVID for the first 10 days of, of January. Right. Pretty darn good. Right. So I'm, I'm, I'm doing good. I'm ahead of the game. I might get COVID again. Who knows? I might get something else. Right. Right. Might uh, step on a nail, stub a toe, what have you. I can't do it for a while. I'll figure it out. But at the end right. of the year, come hell or high water, it's going to be 365 plus hours in that book. It's written down right there. <laughs> on my desk. Right. Right. Aerobics matters. And don't let anyone tell you any otherwise. Right. Well, Vinny, uh, I, hear, uh, I hear all the time that, you know, you do too much aerobics. It, it robs your pump, bro. Broski, bro Namath, shoeless. What does robs Jack. your pump mean? That sounds. Uh, uh, you know, your that pump, could you know, be a you, porn. Yeah, <laughs> they, they they say it robs your pump. Like, oh, oh you, you don't you can't gain lean muscle mass when you're doing aerobics. Partially, that's true. You're not going to get as big as fast, right? Because you're doing other stuff, right? So, if <clears throat> so those guys just have different goals then. Right. People that people that want to do that, I always look at bodybuilders and all these guys, they're all pumped up. Ask them to go run a mile. They'll be out of breath. They can't do it. Yeah. Right. So I believe, you know, when people go, what does fit actually mean? I've talked about this on the show before. I always say fit to do what? If you come to me and say, Vinny, I want to run a 10K, I'm not going to say, okay, let's get in this weight room. We're going to do five sets of squats, really heavy. And then we're going to do five sets of leg press, really heavy. And we're going to do four sets of deadlift, really heavy. And we're going to do that week in and week out. And you go run your 10K. You're not going to get anywhere. And if you came to me and said, Vinny, right now I can run a 10K like nobody's business, but I want to be stronger. I'm going to go, okay, let's go hit some squats. Let's change it up. You see, 
it's always fit to do what? What right. are you fit for? You know, when you're a ballerina, you got to be limber, you got to have aerobic fitness, and you have to have strength, you have to have it all right, you guys worked on everything, right, Anna? I, except for lifting upper body things. Right. <laughs> but your legs, which and is everything why are powerful. Oh, yeah. yeah. It's right. funny, because Lauren, and I had that discussion today, because he did leg day, and I did upper body. So we did our parts of our bodies that we hate doing the most. And he loves doing upper body like he doesn't get it. He's like, that's great. I love it. He hates leg day. I was like, doesn't everybody hate leg day? And then I was like, wait a minute. I love leg day. I love leg day too. Because you know, I, I had leg day today too. My legs are hurting right now. It feels like you're doing something. Yeah, yeah. I, yeah. Every time look, I did leg day. And then uh, I didn't want to do my aerobics today. Like I took a day off of aerobics, but I took the dog for a 90 minute walk. Right? Stretch it out a little bit. But I feel it. I feel it in my quads. Yeah. I feel it in my hamstrings. I feel it in my ass. Yeah, I, I, I made I like made him that. come walk up the hill with me. He didn't like that. I was like, come on, you'll stretch your legs. And he was like, we'll do the flat part. I was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then I was like, come on, let's go up the hill. <laughs> so you got him to go up the hill? Yeah. On leg day. Uh, look, I did I did some hills with Bonzo. But you, you know, know what? He came back from leg hurt. day. You know what he said? He what? said, I'm going to do a couple more. Um, you know, he does likes to do the lunge across the yard. Right. He's like, I'm gonna do a couple more laps of lunges across the yard. I'm like, so obviously it didn't fatigue him all the way. If he was ready to do more lunges, he was excited to do lunges. Oh, when, when I look, when I leave the, the gym on leg day, there ain't no more lunges being done. <laughs> and, you know, I still take it seriously. Like I'm getting ready to play football next week. Even though I don't go heavy, I go slow and I go meticulous and I do it. So folks, I'm not poo-pooing at all strength exercises because no one look i got a damn power rack behind me you know what do you think i do you think it's there for sure you think this is you know, i use all of this stuff right right i have a hyper extension over here i i got a hex bar over there i got i got i got dumbbells got everything what's a hex bar um <clears throat> for old timers like me that you know you don't want to have a bar in front of you when you do deadlift you have that bar that it looks like a hex and it goes around you and you stand in the middle and you put the weights on the end. Sometimes I take, let me give a little more information here. I'll take my hex bar outdoors, throw some weights on the end and do former carries up and down the yard because my yard goes on an incline and it hurts both ways. I can tell you that it hurts more going up the incline, obviously, but um, yeah, I use that hex bar outside. You know, because if you go with dumbbells, they're going to hang, you know, they're going to keep hitting your quads. And I got the hex bar. Why not take it outside? Boom. I look I like an idiot. You out, out in those mean streets doing a hex hex bar. Yeah, I got my hex bar. I put on my Speedo. Go out there. <laughs> yep. What color is your Speedo? Oh, I'm Italian. I got a red and I got a yellow. Canary yellow and Ferrari red. I got two. <laughs> Perfect. Um, by the way, I was watching um, the family Stallone second mm -hmm. season. I am into this now. I, I'm going to say it right here. They need to give Frank Stallone his own show. Frank Stallone's great. The guy is funny and he's not trying to be funny. Right. And in the first season, you can see, you know, look, I, my feeling is Sly and Jennifer looked around and went, wait, these Kardashians, they got hot chicks and they're making a lot of money. Let's see if we can get our, our ne'er-do-well daughters to do well. And, you know, you put Sly in the show with them and you got a show, right? I get what they were doing. So the first season, they were trying to do this and that. The second season is basically Sly fucking with Frank every chance he gets. Yeah. And the episode when they're in it, there's two or three episodes in Italy and Frank comes out with a, a Speedo on. Oh God. <laughs> Sly start Sly takes his wife or his daughter's extensions, you know, the hair extensions, mm -hmm. puts it in the front, takes a <laughs> napkin, stuff it in the back, and then starts giving him a wedgie. It's like these guys are like nine years old. That's great. Yeah, it's, it's like you look at that and you go, these two guys love each other. These you know, that brotherly love thing, right? By the they, way, like you this. love Sly, right? He's one of your favorites. Yeah, I, I think uh he's one of my favorite actors because I love what he's been able to do in life. The guy, you know, speech impediment, every problem in the world came from a broken home 
you name it. The guy had every problem in the world. He's created what? At least three franchises. There's Faraki, there's Rambo, and there's Expendables. There's three franchises. You know, he's written most of those movies. And, you know, I think he's just an amazing guy. He's a come from behind story. He's more of a come from behind story than his character in Rocky. Would you agree? Yeah, yeah I agree. But, so Here's I'm a fan of that. I think everyone should look at that guy and go, that's the American dream. That's a guy that, and by the way, the world's, you, you think I have a speech impediment? That guy has, I mean, he slurs every, as a matter of fact, he said in one episode, he was getting ready to go up on stage and his wife goes, would you like a drink? He goes, a slur enough already. <laughs> yeah. He yeah. knows who he is, right? He, he's got a speech impediment. He's worked past it and he's done incredible things. He had to create characters for himself. Why do you ask? Um, I, we went to go see Justin last weekend. He was in West Hollywood visiting and, uh, staying with a dear friend of all of ours, but a very close friend of his and George's and who was previously in New York for years doing social media. And it, <laughs> we're sitting at lunch and he goes, the friend, um, or no, he, the friend didn't say this. Justin said it. Uh, you know, how's your job going? How's the thing going? And he's like, oh, it's great. It's amazing. I love it. Um, I got I to gotta go to work later today. We have a shoot. And Justin turns to me and goes, he, he's basically been living at Sly Stallone's house because he does all of his social media for him. And I went, oh, really? I know. I was like, oh, <laughs> Vinny, I've, somehow I want to connect you guys. I'll figure it out. I think Sly and I need to be connected. Yeah, I want to figure yeah. it out. In some way, shape, or form, I, I've been a big fan my entire life. I, look, I, you know, I talk a lot about getting off the bayou, getting out of a small town and, yeah. and making something. And that movie, that first movie, had a lot to do with it because, and by the way, everyone's got this story. I, you know, I think that guy's helped more people than he can ever imagine. Oh, right? I'm sure. You know, you know, kids were coming to school. I had already been working out for a couple of years, and I've told the story before. Kids were, you know, going, "Hey, you got to go to the Grand Theater. You got to see this movie, Rocky." And I'm like, "What's it about?" He's like, "It's a guy like you. He's a guy like you." And I was like, "I was like 14 Does years old." That mean right? Italian. <laughs> and then I said, "Well, what is he?" I says, "Like Rocky Marciano." A Rocky Graciano. I thought it was like a biopic or something, right? Right, right, right. I couldn't wrap my head. Think about it. I couldn't wrap my head around what Rocky was. It's like, no, no. This guy is like you. He's kind of built like you, but he's a boxer and he he talks like you. Like you could barely understand it. My my friends are saying this to me as if it's a compliment to me. You know how we can't understand you when you speak because I really had a bad speech impediment. Yeah, it's like you know how we can't understand you. you. Can't understand this guy. He's like he's like you know. <laughs> And I'm like, great. Well, he's up there in a movie. Great. You want me to go see a movie about a guy like me who can't speak? That, that's all I knew about Rocky. I didn't know anything else. It's like, no, but, but he's like inspirational. You know how you like to work out and you run all the time and you're in the gym, pull ups, push up. He does all that in the movie, just like you. And I'm like, I'm not going to see that. I'm not going to see it. I think I was the last person in Donaldsonville to walk into the Grand Theater. And I went with my brother, Michael, and, and uh, I said, I said, dude, I, I got to go see this. I got to go see what they're talking about. And for the first part of the movie, it was, it was kind of cringeworthy for me because mm. I'm like, you know, he's on the dock and he's this kind of loser guy and he's oh, 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 oh. And I'm like, that's what people think I sound like. That's what I am. That guy, I get what they're talking about. He's got dark hair like me. He's Italian like me. He's, you know, muscly. And I was kind of muscly back. I, I got that part. And I was like, they think I'm this guy. And then it goes into a love story, right? It's not right. a boxing movie. It's a love story. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, oh man, he's going to date that girl. And then she, he won't be able to box because I used to believe that if you dated a girl, you you got weak legs, you know, because that's all I heard from these old Italians, right? Right. He's like, he's no way he's going to beat Apollo Creed now. He's dating this girl. He even he he wrote that line in the movie. I don't know if you remember this. 
the line when Mick says, you need to stay away from that pet shop dame, right? That yeah. was Mick's line, get away from that pet shop dame. <laughs> you know, it, it's the old edict of, if you got a woman in your life, you can't be good right. at a sport. I'm 14 years old. I know nothing about love. I know nothing about women. Right. I, I think that these girls can be a problem. <laughs> Girl, for me, girls were problematic, right? And I was like, oh, how, how do you become a good athlete if you mess around with girls? You should stop going to that pet shop. I'm, I'm with Mick on this, right? And then, of course, you know, by the time they get to the scene where he's drinking eggs and running up and down stairs and catching chickens, you know, I'm like cheering with everyone else. Right. right? So, and so I left that movie with a good feeling going, okay, I, I like this guy, you know, and, and he, he made a guy like me think, oh, wait, maybe I could get past a speech impediment. Maybe I'm not such an idiot. And I really think that a movie like that is what made me continue on to really work hard in athletics and, you know, get a scholarship right. and on and on and on. And here we are. So, yeah, I, I think that guy might have had a lot to do with where I am in life. I really do. And by the way, when they go to Italy, guess where he's from? Um, no, I, I don't know. Where? Sicilia? No. Sicilia? No, he's not from Sicily. They go to Italy and he goes back and meets his family. And right outside of Puglia. Right um, outside of Puglia. You know what else really? is from Puglia? Me. Yeah. And you know who else is from Puglia? Villa Capelli Olive Oil. You? Villa Capelli Olive Oil. That's right. That's we're looking at. You, yeah. Frank, and Sly, and, and Paul. Capelli, and Paul, all from Puglia. That's right. Not my family. We were poor. We lived right on the water. We fished over in, in uh, Calabria. And my dad's family. I don't know. I'd put Puglia up against Calabria any day of the week for the, I for the not ritzy Calabria. part. For money? More Puglia people go to Calabria a, for a vacation than they do to Puglia. Now they go no, to Puglia because it's having a moment. But wait, hang on. Puglia and Calabria both have the sea right there, right? Puglia is right on, uh, right on, on the Mediterranean, correct? Anna, can you hear me? Yeah. What did you say? Puglia is right on the Mediterranean. You, you're looking at water. That can't be so bad. Um. Well, no, it's great. Well, not where my family's from. We're from like the spur of the boot. There's like this forest, this like rocky forest area. Yeah. Like a cave, you it's guys. Fine. But but down cave. but down where Villa Capelli's made is like the flats of Puglia, and it's just it's kilometer after kilometer of olive tree. It's beautiful, and then it ends at the ocean. And we do know that it's the best olives in the world because they make the best olive oil. That's right. right. It's the one fruit juice I tell everyone you should have. People go, any fruit juice I can have? Yes, olive oil. Period. End of story. People say, hey, besides your only, your, your vitamins over at Pure Vitamin, is there any other supplement you take? Yes. Yes, olive oil. It all keeps the inflammation down. Olive oil, fish oil, vitamin E, tocotrienols. You want it all. What are those words? What word did you say? Tocotrienol. It's, it's a type of vitamin E. Most people get tocopherol. But tocotrienol oh. is... It keeps the inflammation on. It's good for your heart, too. That's right. But on top of that, I take my olive oil every day. And the only olive oil I take is Villa Capelli. Villa Capelli olive oil. Here's why. There are other good olive oils out there, but God, go find them. And if you find one, you better be rich. You better have, like, Amazon money. You know, like that guy. Because olive oil ain't cheap. The real stuff, 100% pure olive oil, and ain't cheap. But Villa Capelli, Paul Capelli, and his husband, Paul died. His husband, Stephen Crutchfield, who now I understand has a new love interest in his He's life. He's got quite a little snack him. over there, Vito. Yeah, yeah Vito. And hmm. Vito does not speak a lot of English. Which is probably perfect. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> So Vito well, it makes it made Stephen get much better at his Italian because Paul did all the Italian speaking for him, and now Stephen has to step up and do all the Italian speaking. But he he brought me the most beautiful decanter. I don't know if he's put it up on the site yet, but he's gonna start selling them. You'll see, next time we do a video with me cooking, I'll right. show you 
Um, I want to say he's pricing it around 20. I'm not sure. Uh, but it is gorgeous. Everybody says, where's your, de- where do you get your decanter? And de- decanters are a very good idea because yeah. they keep the sunlight. You don't want to decant your olive oil into a clear bottle Glass. that you sit out on the right. counter because light will degrade right. the oil. But um, go head on over, get the three liter tin, get something else. Make sure your can orders are on. Can, can I buy a decanter now or they're not available yet? I don't know. Let me look. Because I would like a decanter because what I do is I keep putting it in the little uh, half liter tin. I keep filling that up for my big three liter tin. You know what I'm talking about? The little yeah. 350 milliliter thing. Or it might be 750 milliliters. I can't remember. But that's what sits on the counter. And I just pour the, the big it's tin. It's not up that. yet. They have the old ceramic oil dispenser up there. They got. They have a new one. It's there, really there pretty. There was a uh, tequila called something Azul. Or blah, 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 and they had Plus like Azul. This, yeah, I thought about cleaning that out and making that a decanter, but it's too big and too bulky, and you don't want to leave that on the counter. People think you're an alcoholic. So, um, yeah, I can't wait for <laughs> also, this. Also, everything would taste vaguely of tequila. No, I think you could clean it out well enough, right? You can scrub it out. Well, because- I just cleaned out my other decanter that I've been using for years, and I've yeah. literally never cleaned it out. I just kept adding oil to it, and there were some bits and pieces at the bottom of that. So yeah, no, clean out your decanters, you folks. Bottom. PSA, clean out your decanters. Yeah. Um, go to villacapelli.com, use the discount code Vinny, V-I-N-N-I-E. You'll get 10% off your order each and every time. You know the deal. Um, Vinny, can I ask some fitness questions that people have asked me to ask you? Yeah. Was I very clear on aerobics versus anaerobics and that we need both? Yeah. We need okay, both. I just wanted to I'm sorry. Also, to go back and listen to, and maybe Leona can tag, uh, go back and listen to, I believe it was three to four weeks ago, you did an NSNG 101 for aerobics and you went into That's detail right. about the VO2 max capacity, why it strengthens your heart, why it strengthens your lungs, mm-hmm. why it strengthens your circulation. And you went into more detail about that. And that's a must listen. Mitochondria, Go back and listen Anna, we got into mitochondria in that episode. Yeah. Mitochondria. I, when I hear these guys, you know, oh, do this, don't do that. No, do it all. You got to do it all. All right, I'm 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 done yelling. That's what, fine. What, what, do you, what, what do you got? Okay, um Pomona Mama, who she reaches out to me a lot on Instagram, she says, uh, can you and Vinny talk about exercises to do for mild shoulder or knee pain? I've been running more lately and feel slight knee pain in only one knee. I also have slight shoulder pain in one shoulder. I would say more discomfort than pain. Take care. Okay. I don't know where the knee pain is for Pomona Mama. I don't know if it's in a meniscus. Oh, that makes the difference at where know. it is? Yeah, 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 yeah. It, it could be okay. patella tendinitis. Why uh, don't you go over the things? Because I bet there's a lot of people out there listening who have knee pain and shoulder pain. Okay. Sometimes, not all the time, one of the best exercises or the two best exercises for knee pain, if you, if you and do it, you know, start off very light in the gym, um, is to do leg extensions and leg curls because it's going to help you strengthen the soft tissue around that joint. Now, if it's so leg extensions is when you're sitting in that and, thing and you, and you lift it. Up. Yeah, you, yeah. It's, it's on your shins or ankles and you lift it up. Exactly. Okay. Okay. And leg curls is when usually you're laying down and you're curling your biceps femoris. That's what the hamstrings are called. Right. And what that does is it'll strengthen all of the tendons and soft tissue around your knee so that your knee will track better. It will track straight. Now, you got to go light. You got to work into this. Now, if you have patella tendinitis, you might want to stay away from the leg extensions because all that's going to do is aggravate that, right? Icing after a run will also help, depending on where the pain is. Now, you know, if you think of... um, all right, so this is the, the top condyle from your, 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 your quad, right, from your, your femur. Mm-hmm. And then you have the bottom one here. And when you run, they rub like that, and, you know, you have a okay. kneecap. You, you, he's taking his knuckles right, and doing like. So when you run, it goes like, so if, if, you, if you're off kilter or you might have a bad pair of running shoes, if you're pronating or supinating or whatever, you can cause too much pressure. Look at this, Anna. You see? You could cause too much pressure that way or that way. Okay, so you could horizontally be moving. 
Right. So the medial okay. collateral ligament or the lateral collateral ligament, one of the two, either the inside or the outside, can get aggravated, mm. right? And the best way to fix that is, you know, ice, lay off of it for a while, do some leg extensions and leg curls. And when that starts to feel better, lunges without weights and don't bounce into them, ease into them and come up and squatting without weights. Do anything like that to start working the area around the problem to help strengthen the problem. And then after you do those things, go back and ice again. Okay. That's the only way around it. Now with the shoulder, who knows what it is? I, I, did she bump the shoulder? Did she hit it? Did she break it when she was five? Is it, you know, she's doing some kind of weird exercise where, you know, the, it could be some bursitis, you know, maybe she hurt something in the bursar. Maybe it, you know, a lot of times um, it's uh, some of the, the ligaments around the edges that get tender. I don't know. She could yeah. have some arthritis in there. I, it, you can't diagnose that. A doctor couldn't diagnose. If you went to a doctor and said, doc, I got shoulder pain, the first thing he's going to do is send you for x-rays and then pr possibly MRIs to see where the impingement is. There's no right. way for me to sit here and go, oh, she's got shoulder oh, no, pain. Of A, B, C, and D. So I'm sorry. Even when I went from my knee pain to the guys who were the osteopaths for the Rams, mm -hmm. and they were like, yeah, you just, it's a crackle behind the patella. And mm -hmm. uh, they're like, yeah, it's just arthritis. And I got very offended. I was like, how dare you? Yeah. They're like, how old are you? At the time, I was, like, I was like 45. And they're like, yeah, you're middle aged. You have arthritis. And I was like, what? How dare you? He doubled down on it. Yeah. <laughs> After I said, how dare you? He was like, no, that's what it is. Look, Anna, you know, I, I talk about my neck and my lower back all the time. Um, you know, in my neck, I, you know, they doctor just, you know, they did MRIs, they did uh, x rays, and doctors like, we can't do anything except surgery, you're going to be in pain. So I took it upon myself to start working my neck. And I work it. I, I don't know if you can see it now, you can't see it. But here, I, right back there, I got a, a, a slew of rubber bands, you can't really see it. Let's see. You see the rubber band? Oh, yeah, right you there? do all your neck exercises. Yeah, and then I have the harness sitting on the back side of that. You can't really, you see it hanging off the ice there? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I take that harness. Of course, I, I do it with the weights. I do the front, and I, I take the rubber bands, and I, I connect the rubber bands. I've, I've con done a whole system to where I'm working my neck side to side, front, back. I'm doing this whole thing, and I do it every other day without fail. Even when I went to Europe. Serena goes, you're not taking that with you. I went, yeah, I don't care if you, you know, because, you know, Kristen's always looking for a reason to laugh at something else I'm doing. Kristen and Sam. <laughs> um, it's like, yeah, I'll try to hide from your family so they don't have to see another goofball thing I'm doing, but it matters to me to be healthy. To, yeah. uh, look, my neck is, you know, can I really turn it a lot? No, right? I, I have some mobility problems with my neck at this point. Right. But remember, I used to just sit and I some days I I'll just sit here and I was like, I was trying to crack it and stretch it and the whole thing just to get out of extreme pain, just to get back to like relative pain. Now, I have pretty much zero pain most of the time. Sometimes I have a bad day. Yeah. Okay. It happens. You know, every day, you know, along with all the other oils I take, I take my CBD, but I got to be honest with you, I don't know if the CBD is the most important oil. I really think it's the olive oil and all of the omega-3s I'm taking, which yeah. as you know, I've taken an abundant amount of it. Right. And it keeps the inflammation in my body. I haven't, I'm 61. I'm feeling better than when I was 51. That's great. When doctors were going, you're just, you know, play football. <laughs> Good luck, pal. You're done for life. I'm feeling better now than I did 10 years ago. Do that math. That's you great. Can do it. You can actually do it. So what about shoulder things? And my ears are perking up for this. Like, for example, today, when I'm doing my shoulder presses, mm -hmm. I feel it a little bit. But really, when I feel it is when yeah. I try to lift forward. Like, let's say I'm lifting my arm like in a first, like I can barely do it right now. Or if I'm like lifting a pan or something, it's like, it hurts so bad under there. And so I'm just, oh, under here's where, one. When, like, when I do the uh, really, upright rows, the upright rows, right, I basically am like forcing my way rows. through it. Is that wrong? Yeah, you shouldn't be forcing your way through the pain. Um, mm, I love to know what you, 
what you injured. It's probably a tendon. I have read <laughs> that a lot of me perimenopausal and menopausal women would just get a frozen shoulder. That's what it feels like. I cannot lift it above a certain point. Where did you hear that? It's all it's in the menopause groups. And then, I mean, literally like, so, oh, so many of my friends have been like, oh, I had that. And then it just magically went away one day. I'm like, what? I wonder if it's I've tried resting it. I've wonder, tried. The only time it hasn't hurt, which is an interesting testament to pain. You know that trick when uh, if you hurt yourself, like if you stub your toe, they say to smack your hand against something so that it'll distract from the pain of stubbing your toe. Yeah, dumbest thing ever, but go on. Well, the that's hysterectomy, the first week of the incisions were so painful that that's the only time my shoulder hasn't hurt in the past year. And I was like, oh, maybe this helped my whole shoulder pain heal. <laughs> I don't know why I thought that. And then it came back when it was time to start moving around again and exercising. So is it in the front, Anna, or is it? Yeah, it's right here. I'm, I'm telling, if I were to stand and lift like a, like this side, I can lift my arm. I'm not going to show, I'm not like dressed for wearing, being on camera, but like right. this arm, if I were like to lift my arm, like I'm doing first position, right? That's yeah. easy. Or even lifting it straight in front. Here, I can only lift it about that far and it really hurts. That's about as far as I can go. One finger where it hurts. In there. All right. Now, the other thing, another, I've had doctors tell me everything. One doctor said, take prednisone. I'm not doing that. Another doctor gave me a homeopathic. That shit doesn't work. Um, another doctor said, it's the scar tissue from my uh, lumpectomy here that's bunched up and it's make, causing me pain there because I have a giant, like a big thing of scar tissue there. So mm -hmm. I'm like, okay. okay. <laughs> the point is I can't lift this arm. And so now I hate doing upper body stuff because I just feel like I can't get it done and I hate it. You see, Anna, the problem is right in that area, you have the bicep break eye, which is the bicep tendon. You have the, if I, I remember like right, the subspinatus okay. is right there and the supraspinatus is there. Uh, to the side, uh, it hurts a little bit, but it's really to the front. Like, like imagining you're cooking and you lift a heavy pan and you can't lift the pan up. Yeah. It, 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 so many things, it. so many things are right where you're touching. Mm -hmm. But they're all, it, it, it's all tendons, right? It's the subscapularis. Yeah, for sure, I feel them. The, 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 I think the teres major comes around the front from your scapula and connects in there. And your bicep tendon. So that's this one that comes, oh no, scapula. Well, no, subscapularis. So you you got to understand, some of these muscles come underneath. Or under come, here. Yeah, th that's why we're able to move the way we move. Um, it's, it's all, it's kind of crazy. Um, and it's a very weird joint. So when people go, yeah, my, my shoulder hurts right here. What do you think it is, Vin? It's like, it could be <laughs> one of a thousand things. Right, right. Oh, I don't doubt that. Yeah. So sorry, uh, yeah, again. Uh, you know, but what I, do you I, do I, to work around it? Do you just, you, like, I just lift you this rest side? It. Rest, you're rice, rest, ice, compression. I know, but I don't understand. It. Like, am I supposed to just lift the other side? Cause it's not like I'm not gonna do anything. You got to work around it. You can only do okay. things that will not hurt it. If high poles are hurting it, don't do high poles for a while. It, it won't go away. I don't away know what high pole is. Straight. Is that this thing? That's the one, no, that's the one. Where oh, you, no. Oh, the, the upright. Oh, above high poles. Like that. Okay. I was, see, that. I, see, I'm like, this, this arm, great. Move it all around. <laughs> yeah. This arm. You're all ah. with that arm. But I you know. got to get the break. I mean, if you don't rest it and you don't ice it, good luck with the rest of it. And okay. like I said, take take a ton of anti-inflammatory properties like omegas and they olive do. oil. Yeah. And, you, know, all, you know, all the things. Do all the things I'm doing. Like I said, I'm a diesel engine at this point. I just run on oil. Just the way um, it goes. Somebody asked at Vinnie Tordich, does it impact weight loss or otherwise matter if someone is in gluconeogenesis versus ketosis? And the reason why I want to ask you this question is mostly because of, I think people, you know, there are, are relentlessly and except maybe excessively, I don't know, that could be my judgment are 
very often counting ketones and wondering if they're fucking anything up with their NSNG. Paral- so we get uh, some now, form of this yeah. question. Am I eating now, too much protein paralysis. and ruining my NSNG? Okay. F- first off, you're never in gluconeogenesis. Okay. That is not a just, state. That's just a function that happens. That's a process that happens. That's why, and look, I just had Dr. E on the podcast last Friday. And yeah. um, she agreed with me. She she said it ex- exactly the same. There's two macronutrients your body needs, fat and protein, right. period. And people go, where you get you, you got to keep your blood sugar stable. Yeah. Through the process of gluconeogenesis, you will get what you need. Your body will give you what you need if you're eating enough protein and enough fat. Right. And you're not starving yourself. That's just a fact. That's the way that works. Okay. So, you know, we've learned, you know, Foxy Roxy, Hoxy. Foxy Hoxy. Mm-hmm. Yeah. She, she came to me about a year and a half ago and she goes, look, I'm still in NSNG, but I need to, I saw something on the internet. I want to try this. I'm going to go really high protein for a while. And I just want to say, okay, she did that. She tried that experiment. Higher protein, lower fat. She tried. Very high protein, very low fat. And what happened? She ended up gaining weight, Mm -hmm. right? She gained weight. And she goes, yeah, you know, I gained 30 pounds. But when she went back to NSNG and started adding more fat and taking out some of the protein. And of course, you got to eat less, you can't just sit there and hammer food all day long, folks, this is not a do this with impunity thing. She just, you know, just changed the the percentages on the macros back to more fat and dialed down the protein. She didn't lose the 30 pounds back, she lost 40. So she actually lost the 30 back plus another 10. Amazing. So you do the math. There's nothing you could do with impunity. And you know, what happens with people, I hear it in the consults, all the people set up consults all the time, they'll go, it was working really well. And then I tried A, B, C and D. Right? Well, the biggest problem I was hearing two and three years ago was, well, you know, the pandemic, and I go, yeah, pandemic, well, you know, we started eating ice cream every night and probably drinking too much, making sourdough, what people started drinking and yeah, Mm -hmm. making pizzas and everything they saw on the internet. You know, people were just trying to fill their time, right? I get it. But now people are going, I was doing it, it was working. I'll go, well, why did you stop doing it? And they're right. well, th- I saw this guy and I saw this thing on the internet and he was saying, hack this and go do that and other thing. And it's like, okay, well. But there's a you're... lot out there. There's a lot right. of people out there saying a lot of things and people who claim right. that they're low carb people saying a lot of things. Right, exactly. So go aren't try necessarily it. Well, it the, the rationality of, of NSNG. I'm, all, I'm always here to help. I'm never going to go, you're an idiot. Why did you do that? I'm always here to help. You come right yeah. back and we're going to help you. We're going to get you right back on, on track. Well, Just so, what we do around here. So is it bad? The, the, the crux of the person's question is, is it bad if there's too much neo, gluconeogenesis? Yeah, that means you're eating too much protein. And most of that, pro- your body's going to use what it's going to use to, you know, fix every cell in your body, because that, that's what protein does, breakdown of amino acids, if you have a complete protein, every cell in your body will be rebuilt from that. And then all the leftovers, because some idiot on the internet said, hey, you have 1.5 grams of, of protein per pound of lean body mass, and you believe that bullshit, and now you're gaining weight because your body is turning too much of that protein into a long chain triglyceride or a triglyceride period and storing it as a fat. So, and so know, that's why you could even have higher resting glucose after going after being carnivore. Yeah, you, you well, you, you're going to look, or fasting when, you glucose, eat, I should say. when you eat a steak, and your blood sugar goes up, you go, oh, wait a minute, steak made my blood sugar go up. Yes, that happens. Anytime you do any kind of activity on your stomach and you give yourself something to eat, that's your body doing what it's going to do. But it's not the you're long, saying that. <laughs> it's not the long, uh, uh, you know, glucose load you get from eating bread or pasta or pizza. And it's not the the big giant spike where your body has to dump a shit ton of, of uh, insulin to bring down a sugar spike. It just raises it because that's what your body does. Hell, you wake up in the morning, people, Vinny, I don't know what happened. I barely, I, I ate steak for dinner. 
I fasted until noontime. My blood sugar was 115. Oh my God. That happens to me all the time. Yeah. Almost it happens daily. to people when they're fasting all the time. Your body's going to regulate what it's going to regulate. You're not doing anything wrong. The right. thing that got you fat is you were having too much carbohydrates all the time, right? You, right. you were constantly having glycogen loads. You were getting glucose spikes. You were getting it all. You were just getting it all. Well, I guess my question is, because I've been doing, I've been thinking about this. I watched a thing on Nightline on like the fallout of Ozempic and all that stuff. And I found it very interesting because I know we've touched on this too. When you say the thing, you can't do anything. I never remember it with impunity, with impunity, with impunity. Yeah. yeah. I always think to myself about that. Cause I'm like, well, the Ozempic somehow got people to eat less. And I think if they're eating less, they're going into a state of dietary ketosis, right? For like most of the day, if they're not eating. And by the way, my girlfriend came for a visit. She's been on ZepBound for three months. She's lost 35, 40 pounds. She still has about 50 to go. She feels great. She's really excited. But we were together for two days straight. And I saw her not be able to have more than two or three bites of food for her entire meal. And that whatever, it's working for her. I don't judge. But I was like, oh, that wouldn't be for me because I want to enjoy my meal. Like I want to enjoy my food and I don't want to like, have, you know, so, but, but I also understand when I'm able to be in dietary ketosis, that's like nature's ozempic. You know what I'm saying? Like it makes you not as hungry. So it's accomplishing yeah, the thing. You're, you're so that it, correct. But then it brings me back to the idea of it is about the calories to some extent, because these people are eating less. She's eating well, less. Look, Serena, uh, Serena. It is calories. I'll, I'll be Serena. Anna, Calories do matter. I, when people go, calories don't matter. A calories, a ca you know, a calorie. First off, let me be very clear. A calorie is not a calorie. A calorie from uh, meat versus a calorie from carbohydrates, not the same. You're going to get a, a denser calorie right. from meat. It's going to be healthier for you. And um, but you can overeat meat. We see people overeating fat all the time. There's nothing. And I've been saying this for 11 years. There's nothing you can do with impunity. Sorry, folks, but you'll have an easier time cutting out carbohydrates because you won't have the cravings. Now, let's right. get to the Ozempic part of it. But that's nature's Ozempic because that's, that's what it's doing. Ozempic. That's correct. But what's happening with GLP-1s, according to Dr. Bickman, who was there at the beginning when they were creating these things, GLP-1s will slow down the process in your stomach so it slows down the process of food yeah, it in slows general. Down gut motility. So literally your stomach does not compress and digest the food and move the food down the pipe. So you're getting food, you, you, you know, like if you take a really strong one, like we you know, people will start saying, oh yeah, like on day three, I'm belching. It smells like roadkill. By right? the way, because just so, just to be clear, we yeah. and Ozempic are the exact same. It's about which dosage you take. It's, it's They're the dose. exact same. It just like Manjaro and Zepbound are the exact same. That's a terzepatide. Yeah. Ozempic and Wegovi is semaglutide. They're all GLP ones. They all come into GLP ones. Yes. And the bottom line is they all slow down the digestion. So you end up with decayed food in your stomach. That's not going to be healthy in the long run. You can't do this forever. Yeah. Number one. Number two. Uh, they found with Ozempic and all of the GLP ones, Wegovi and all of them that unlike with normal weight loss, where you might lose 20% of muscle, which is about, you know, right, you know, 20% along with 80% fat, and you lose some, some bone in there, because when you lose muscle, you lose bone, it's just what it is. Um, that's why it's important to work out when you're losing weight. With Ozempic, they're, they're, they're saying up to 50, if not 60%, when I say Ozempic, all of the GLP ones, right? Right, Ozempic, Wegovy, Babap, Baboop, Babop, Jardians, I don't care what the fuck it is. It's all the same thing. Yeah. You're losing more muscle mass. And when you lose more muscle mass with it, you're going to lose more bone. And as you get older, losing muscle and bone, not a good idea. No. So, it, you look, we're going to look back on this time in history and go, what were we thinking? I've been saying that from the beginning. 
there is no magic pill out there. There's no magic pill. As Anna says, eating low carb is like, you know, natural ozempic. I it's like the that closest you're that. going to be able to get to it, I yeah. think. And Absolutely. I know, I know that fasting is not for everybody. I know that fasting will also achieve some things and fat, but fasting is not for everybody. And you know, I don't know. I don't begrudge people their choices. Choose whatever you want to choose. It would not be for me. And and it even solidified it to have my friend there and have her in my house for three days and going to all the meals and seeing what her life was like. It's like, she loves it. It's great for her. But I was like, whoa. And she even said the first day after I have the shot, I can't, I'm so nauseous. I can barely go to work. I'm like, that doesn't work for me. I'm trying to grow a company. Like what, I can't. What a way to live. What a way to live. And, and Anna, listen, even my buddy, Don Coddington. It's the billionaire, Don Coddington's Friday five. You know, even Coddington, you know, he used to say to me, we'd be hiking somewhere. He's like, come on, I'm having a second steak. Why aren't you having a second steak? It's like, I'm full. And he was still even because even though he lost like 75 pounds, he still has about 20 pounds he could lose, right? right? And he got to that set level and he goes, oh, now I see you guys. He goes, you guys don't tell the truth. I went, what do you mean I don't tell the truth? You have us all thinking that we, I said, no, no, that, that's your carnivore people over there telling, you could just sit around and eat all the steak you want and you'll be fine. I see so many of these carnivore advocates, they got a few pounds they can lose. Are they fat? No. Are they morbidly obese? No. But can they lose a few pounds? Absolutely. I don't know. I'm I not really name any names, names, but they're ripped. out there. Huh? Carnivore people I've seen look pretty ripped. Yep, some of them are pretty ripped, but some, some of the advocates out there are putting on a little muffin top I've seen here and there. I'm not going to mention any names. Folks, go look them up yourself. Now, <laughs> they look pretty good. They're Shady. not morbidly obese. But let me tell you something. They can stand to lose a pound or two. They certainly can. I'm just telling you the truth. I'm not going to sit here and bullshit. I, I, I always promise, just like I talked about this doctor I loved at the beginning of the show. I'm not going to sit here and just let this bullshit go by. I'm going to I'll always tell you guys the truth because I do this show with, without any kind of, you know, no one is sponsoring the show. No one's telling me what I have to say. I can say what the hell I want. I'm going to tell you guys the truth. Well, there, you do have one sponsor besides Villa Capelli, and that's Eat Happy Kitchen. And I'm going to tell Eat Happy Kitchen they can eat. No, never mind. We're no, we're ending the show. Yeah, we are. That was your cue. That was my cue. Eat happy, folks. <laughs> He's on eat it, happy. folks. <laughs> eat happy kitchen. I'm 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 shot out of a cannon today, Anna. You are. You I told Anna. Me. I'm going to tell you guys before I get to Anna's ad. I told her at the beginning of the show. I said, you know what? I got to pee right now, but I'm so mad. I'm not going to pee. I want that energy. I want that pee. Did you soil yourself in the past 54 minutes? No comment. Okay. That's fair. No comment. I won't, I won't dive deep. Okay. You don't want to know. You don't want to know what's no. going on in my Levi's today. <laughs> I don't want to know. But if you want to know what's going on at eathappykitchen.com, go check out Anna Vecino and Eat Happy Kitchen. And uh, also... They can sign up for that book, Eat Happy Eat Italian. Happy Italian. Yeah. Yes, in fact, that ends the Ides of March. If you want the bonuses, thank you to everybody who's pre-ordered the book. Please go to Eat Happy Italian. Click through either Amazon or Barnes & Noble or whatever the links, wherever you want to buy a book. Most people are going to buy it at Amazon. Please pre-order the book. Please, please, please. This is very, very important. If you want to support my work, please go pre-order the book. You, If you want to, you can enter your receipt for the bonuses. Um, I want to reward you guys and thank you because I know it's very early before the book comes out. The publisher is using the numbers of this pre-order period to decide how many to print. And if we don't pre-order now, there won't be enough. So, so don't screw around. Go get your book right now. And by the I way, I would like Anna to make it a bestseller. I really would. I'm not going to like pussyfoot around. I want to have a best-selling book because then it gets our work out there more. Like yeah. I want Vinny to have best-selling documentary. I want high views. I want highly rated podcasts. I want listens and downloads because that gets the work out there and doesn't make us feel like we're just spinning our wheels over here. So it's very important. I think you yeah. guys are going to love the book. It's beautiful. And Vinny wrote an awesome blurb for it. I did. I did. You should see the blurb. It's like out of all the blurbs I've ever written. It's the this most is the beautiful one. blurb. This it is really the blurb. is. Anna, um, um, somebody's out of... Um, 
taco season. Mm. And somebody is eating alone over here because somebody's oh, wife you poor thing. is acting right now in a series in what you call Hollywood. And someone needs taco seasoning. Mm -hmm. I'll get you. I got myself a lot of it. I got all the pucked up. I'm going through the pucked up. I'm going through, as a matter of fact, I'm going to be using my dill in just a few minutes because I got myself a piece of sockeye salmon. I did too and, from Trader um, Joe's. I got mine from uh, Harris Teeter. It was fresh today. It oh, just wait, came on, in. It was, so, it was so orange. It was so beautiful. You know how rare it is for something to take off on our Instagram? Yeah. You know how rare that is. And yesterday, yeah. Lauren and I did our, we go to Trader Joe's a couple times a year because, you know, it's a schlep for us now. Mm-hmm. And I posted, I want you to be able to see this. How do I see As it? I'm playing it. Well, first of all, there's a long doggo. Let me find this thing. I want you to yeah. hear this. Time it was, we each get a basket. We go into Trader Joe's. Here's my basket. It's beef. Oh, we got some of this. We got a little sweet potatoes. You got see the frozen blueberries, cheese. Here's his basket. Pizza. <laughs> and cake. Pizza and cake. The time it was, we each yeah. get a basket. That's real life. P people were very triggered by that, by the way. Some people were like, gosh, it's like they're trying to commit suicide. <laughs> Somebody wrote, I was like, no, it's not that. <laughs> Dramatic. They haven't met Lauren Tor Torquenio, have they? No, they haven't met Lauren. Yeah. And by the way, just so you guys know, for every time that you think like, hey, the world is unfair, that yeah. Trader Joe's basket experience is, is proof. Lauren Tarquinio is one of those guys who can metabolize his carbs. His A1C is 4.9. His numbers are stellar. We hate him for that, but that's just the way life is. And I have the NSNG basket and I'm always fighting inflammation and I always have an extra 20 pounds to lose and it drives me nuts. But so if you want to have a temper tantrum, I'm, I'm here with you, but I'm, but we support each other and listen, he has to go outside the marriage to get gluten. So what, what is he supposed yeah. to do? What is yeah, he supposed like, to do? The, the guy, I like, he, was funny. Anna, I don't think I've had ice cream for a whole year. Wow. I love ice cream. Yeah. And I, I love me some ice cream. And the other night I, I went, you know what? I'm going to, I'm going to go because I wasn't going to even bring home a whole pint because if I bring it home, I'm a sugar addict. You know, there's no Serena here to eat half the pint. Right? I, I have so, to take it out of Lauren's hands. I take it away I, from him I, and I, put it away. We, we have we have a, a store like a Hagen Dazs or something, not Hagen Dazs, but like Ben and Jerry's or some store. You get the whole pint. No, I was going to go in and get a okay, scoop. scoop. Got it. And then I thought to myself, it's like you know, it's been a year, and I really want that scoop of ice cream. I can taste it right now. I was going to get like a vanilla something, and um. Then I said, you know what? Serena's going to be home in two weeks. She's probably not had ice cream for a year either because we probably had it together. And, you know, we do that thing where we'll bring one pint home and split it and then quit it again. Or go get the one scoop because it's one split scoop. Split it and done. quit it. Right. You know, as a matter of fact, I even said to myself, okay, it's about eight o'clock. I could get the scoop. I can run home, turn on my espresso machine. It takes about 20 minutes to warm up you know, to get the boiler to temperature and I can just get a couple of espressos. In it. And I, you know what? It's too much work. I'm going to wait until Serena comes home. I've waited this long. I can wait longer because with me, I'm a sugar addict. As long as I can stay away from that sugar, I'll be fine. If I have it, then, uh, you know, I'm dealing with yeah. it. So yeah, I thought well, about you it. You did a good I, job then not going to get the ice cream. I was right by the, you know, I was getting, they were shaving the back of my neck. It was like, it was right across the street. I went, oh, I could just go over there right now. I could just get that scoop, <laughs> mm -hmm. right? And I went, no, 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 no. That, that's not fair to Serena because she likes a scoop of ice cream and I'm going to wait for her. So there you have it. Um, folks. Please report back when you've had your scoop of ice cream. We all want to know that Vinny was human and had a scoop of ice yeah, cream. Yeah, I put a little life into living every now and again. Folks, uh, you, you know what to do. Anna Vocino, we just talked about it. Go check out everything at eathappykitchen.com. She gives out free recipes and all kinds of stuff, but get her books. Come on, don't, don't, don't do that.
Don't do it like that. I'm sending an email right now to get you your taco seasoning. Uh, hang on. What's wrong? I got to find something. All right, here we go. I got it. Never mind. Here we go. All right. So there you have it. Uh, you know what to do with me. We all go shopping on Amazon. Before you go to Amazon, go to VinnyTartars.com. Click through the banner. It puts a little coal on the fire. It gets my train down the track. Um, rate and review this podcast. Go rate it. Go review it. Do all the stuff. On behalf of Anna Vocino, my name is Vinny Tartarich. Put life into living, and let's do it with a little Tom Petty and the Heartbreaker.